In this screencast, I would like to present the capabilities of JProfiler to measure JPA and Hibernate persistence operations. I'm going to use the JPA example that is included in JBoss Seam. Let's look at the session settings and go to the JE and Probes tab here. We can see that the JPA Hibernate probe has its own configuration here. And unlike the JDBC probe, which is generic in the sense that it works with all possible JDBC drivers out there, the JPA and Hibernate probe is rather implementation specific and it explicitly supports the providers that are listed down here. I've configured the JPA Hibernate probe to record data on startup and it is also a good idea to record JDBC data in parallel because the JPA Hibernate probe is able to correlate um, Hibernate JBA persistence operations with JDBC statements. So with this configuration we're going to start this session and once startup has completed it will launch a browser to show the entry page of the example application. Let's log in with the demo account and use the application a little bit. These are all entities that lend themselves to JPA examples. We have hotels, we have bookings and uh, customers. So let's look for a Hilton. Hilton, here is one. This is fine. Let's book this hotel. We have to give a credit card number here. And this is quite easy. We confirm the reservation. Now we have a hotel booking here. And finally, we decide that we want to cancel this reservation again. So let's check what JProfile has recorded in the meantime. Let's go to the JE and Probe section and have a look at the JPA Hibernate Probe. JPA Probe has a hotspots view, a telemetries view, and an events view, also a tracker view for tracking selected hotspots. So let's look at the events view first. The events view shows you a chronological progression of persistence operations. So let's try to see if we can make sense of what we see here. This is when I logged in. The user was retrieved from the database together with the associated bookings. Then the next three queries here are because I typed HIL to find a Hilton hotel. And this is where the hotel was displayed and I created a booking. This is the insert operation and the bookings were refreshed again and then finally I decided to cancel the booking. This is the last remove persistence operation. So this is a great way to simply understand what is happening during a particular use case in terms of persistence operations. You might have noticed the expand controls that are visible in front of each event row if you open them, you can see the associated JDBC statements. And if you compare the JDBC statements to the JPA descriptions, you will find that the JPA descriptions are much easier to understand and are much more helpful for solving a problem than just looking at the JDBC statements. So let's move on to the hotspots view. In the hotspots view, JPA descriptions are grouped. So here we can see that the three queries when I was searching for a hotel are shown in a single line here with an event count of three and when I open the hotspot I can see that there is a node called JDBC calls that shows all associated JDBC calls uh, similar to what we just saw in the events view and then there is a node called direct operations that contains the backtraces that contributed to this hotspot we can see the URL here through which the request entered the system and then we see the internal method structure up to the point where the persistence operation uh, was initiated. Why does it say direct operations? It says direct operations because in JPA Hibernate there are things that don't happen immediately such as an insert or an update which are only actually performed when there is a flush. So here for the insert you can see that it says deferred operations for the node that contains the backtraces. And what JProfiler does is that it remembers 
the stack trace where an entity has been acquired or where it has been persisted if it is a newly created entity and it shows you that stack trace and that is much more useful than showing you the stack trace of an auto flush that happens at an arbitrary point later on so that's another very useful functionality that JProfiler delivers as part of its JPA Hibernate probe.